Here are eight Avatar The Last Airbender references in The Legend of Korra. Number eight, The Cabbage Merchant. My cabbages! You're gonna pay for this! Two cabbages, please. We all remember this poor guy. It seemed like everywhere Team Avatar went, it spelled certain disaster for him and his cabbages. And that bad luck followed his family to the next generation. When Cabbage Corp, a company founded by the cabbage merchant himself, was framed for manufacturing weapons for the Equalists. No! Not my Cabbage Corp! While the discrepancy was eventually cleared up, Cabbage Corp still must have taken a hit, being the center of all this negative publicity. Number 7. Aang's Marvels It was still early in the series when we saw this trick. Now, check this out. So it gave us a great look into Aang's fun-loving and silly personality. For a 112-year-old, he still has a sense of childlike excitement. He looks pretty good out there. Are you kidding? The fish is doing all the work. In The Legend of Korra, we get a tiny detail that shows us that Aang never lost his inner child. Why, you're the Avatar, ain't you? Yep. That's me. I can't believe it! You mind if I take a picture for my wall of avatars? I mean, it is a good trick. Number six, namesakes. It's only fitting that many of the beloved characters of The Legend of Korra are named after beloved characters and even voice actors from Avatar The Last Airbender. Yay, Uncle Boomy's here! Aang would name his son after his childhood friend, Boomy. Boomy? You're a mad genius. <laughs> and of course, Zuko's grandson would carry the name of his adored Uncle Iroh. Tell her we will be arriving in three days' time, and that I look forward to winning back Republic City together. As you wish, General Iroh. The character of Mako was named in honor of the iconic voice actor who played Uncle Iroh in the original series. Brave. Soldier boy comes marching home. And one more you might have missed, Aang and Katara's daughter, Kaya. We missed you, Aunt Kaya. Oh, I missed you too. Kaya was actually the name of Sokka and Katara's mother in the original series. There's a man in our house! Kaya! But actually, Kaya was also the original name given to Katara in the unaired pilot episode of the series. Looking good, Kaya. It won't be long before the Fire Nation sends their whole fleet after your little boyfriend. Kaya, we don't have time for this. So, in a way, Kaya was named after her mother. Sort of. Number five, Foggy Swamp. Hey, you taking us down for a reason? Hey, why are we going down? What? I didn't even notice. Are you noticing now? Is something wrong? I know this is gonna sound weird, but I think the swamp is calling to me. Is it telling you where we can get something to eat? No, I... Th I think it wants us to land there. Ah, foggy swamp. Home to mystic wildlife. It's the heart of the swamp. It's been calling us here. I knew it. Swamp monsters. Ah! And some interesting characters. But in the legend of Korra, it also returns as the home of Toph Beifong. Uh, 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 uh. You want to hug something? Go hug a tree. We're here to work. Which is fitting, because the foggy swamp is where Aang had a vision of Toph before he even met her. Hello? Who are you? <laughs> hey, come back! Maybe Toph is somehow spiritually connected to the swamp itself. 
Number four, General, sorry, Admiral Zhao. The Water Tribe can try to resist the inevitable, but their city will fall today. Yeah, this guy had issues. With that kind of baggage, it's no wonder Zhao ended up wandering the Fog of Lost Souls by the time Tenzin Kaya and Bumi got there in The Legend of Korra. The Fog of Lost Souls is a spirit prison for humans. I read about it in an ancient text. The Fog is actually a spirit that infects your mind and slowly drives you mad, imprisoning you in your own darkest memories. How long can you be trapped in here? I am Zhao the Conqueror. I am the Moon Slayer. I will capture the Avatar! I am Zhao the Conqueror! I am the Moon Slayer! I will capture the Avatar! Hopefully we're not trapped in here as long as that guy. You... You're him! The last airbender! Ah! No! Get off me! You've grown, but I will still defeat you! Come back, Avatar! Face me! I am Zhao the Conqueror! I will capture you! Yikes. Number three, Wan Shi Tong. Now, obviously, this one is hard to miss. It's a gigantic talking owl. I know you're back there. <laughs> but there are some pretty cool references and implications in this encounter. I could just stay in here forever, reading. The last human who said that is still here. So you should know that humans are no longer allowed in my library. Get out! I thought anyone could come in if they brought you some new knowledge. Those are the old rules. Besides, what is the little girl going to teach Wan Chi Tang? He who knows 10,000 things. First off, this guy is Professor Zay. I'm Professor Zay, head of anthropology at Ba Sing Se University. You should leave the way you came. Unless you want to become a stuffed head of anthropology. Man, that guy was dedicated to his studies. And secondly, the policy change he mentions? I thought anyone could come in if they brought you some new knowledge. Those are the old rules. Well, that was a direct result of the actions of Avatar Aang and his friends. You betrayed my trust. From the beginning, you intended to misuse this knowledge for evil purposes. And now, I am going to protect what I love. Yeah, Wan Shi Tong wasn't pleased with them. Number two, lava bending. Of course you remember this terrifying skill, made famous by the notorious Gazan of the Red Lotus. But do you remember seeing lava bending in Avatar The Last Airbender? We saw it from Avatar Roku on the Winter Solstice when he destroyed the Fire Temple. We actually saw Avatar Kyoshi use it to split her peninsula off from the mainland, creating an island. On that day, we split from the mainland. And we even saw Avatar Seto use it in this vision Roku showed Aang. So while Gazan was the first non-Avatar we saw Lava Bend, he definitely wasn't the first to do it. Number one, the Lion Turtles. The true mind can weather all the lies and illusions without being lost. At the end of Avatar The Last Airbender, a Lion Turtle became one of the most important beings in the Avatar world guiding Aang to a power that would ultimately end the Hundred Year War and change history. In the era before the Avatar, we bent not the elements, but the energy within our senses.
but it also left us with tons of questions. What is a lion turtle? Hey, look at these weird lion turtle things. Why could it connect with Aang? And why did it have the ability to unlock new bending powers in people? I took away your fire bending. You can't use it to hurt or threaten anyone else ever again. Those questions were finally answered in The Legend of Korra when we got to explore the origin of the Avatar. The Lion Turtle. Great guardian of our city, we are venturing into the spirit wilds to bring back food for our people. Please, grant us the power of fire. The power is yours to keep until your return. Your first kid. May the element of fire protect you against the spirits. Since lion turtles were the beings that granted bending powers to all benders, it makes perfect sense that they would be able to alter Aang's bending. And that they are old enough and wise enough to remember energy bending, giving us a whole new context to this pivotal scene in Avatar The Last Airbender. But now it leaves us with another question. Was this lion turtle one of the four that Avatar 1 encountered? Or is there a fifth lion turtle strictly to represent energy bending? I think we're gonna need another series to answer that one.